Hi, welcome and welcome back. I hope you're doing well. Let's talk about narcissists and therapy. I had several thoughts to share about narcissists and therapy, and I would love to hear yours. So share those in the comments below. In the meantime, one of the things about narcissists and therapy is that narcissists will try to, and a lot of times they'll succeed in manipulating the therapist in addition to manipulating you. And I spoke with a woman once who went to therapy with an ex and the therapy sessions were the ex's idea. And really the goal of the therapy sessions was for the ex to win her back. And that didn't work out, but in the process of these sessions, the narcissist, this was a covert narcissist, really worked hard at manipulating the therapist and manipulating the sessions. And it got to the point where he was gaslighting the therapist. He was, he laid down on the floor at one point and had a tantrum or meltdown of some kind and just all kinds of theatrics. And it was very painful. However, this woman's goal in going to the therapy sessions was not to allow the covert narcissist to win her back, but more so for her to say her piece to the covert narcissist in front of a witness. And in this case, it worked out. It doesn't always work out for everybody, but in her case, it worked out. And I was like, wow, you really got a rare opportunity there, didn't you? Because most people don't get that luxury of being able to circle back, say their piece in the presence of a witness and have the narcissist listen to it and to have the backing even of the therapist because the therapist took meticulous notes and she wasn't about to be manipulated either. Anyway, narcissists can be very manipulative in the context of therapy sessions and it can be, be very discouraging and frustrating if you're in the therapy session with them trying to make progress in the relationship, whatever it is, and feeling like things are just in a constant loop or just not going anywhere or just even feeling worse coming out of it than you did going into it. Along those lines, another thing I wanted to mention was that a lot of times narcissists don't want to go to therapy. It's too painful to have to bring up all the things that are really at the root of their narcissistic behavior, those ACEs, that childhood trauma or tragedy that they experienced, or even things that they're experienced on an ongoing basis. That can be very painful or shameful to the narcissist, the ways that they've hurt other people, having to listen to that in the context of therapy. I know my mother had suggested at one point when we were all, when I was living at home and we were all together, that we all go to therapy. And my dad didn't wanna go. He refused to go, he didn't wanna go to therapy. He talked down about it and just really slammed the idea and so as a result, we didn't go. And we really needed it as a family. And the idea was that if we did go, we were going to go as a family. And I just think for him, that was just too much because he would have to deal with himself and with his pain and shame and trauma and tragedy from childhood onward. And also deal with what was happening currently at that time in our household. So for whatever reason, for a lot of narcissists, they just don't wanna to go to therapy. And along with that, a lot of narcissists don't trust people. If they have endured abuse, if they have just have abandonment issues or things like that in their past, then they may not trust people and they may be very suspicious of other people and be very self-protective and therapy can be really tricky. You know, you're dealing with somebody who is not related to you and doesn't really know you. And it's it can be very daunting to open up to a stranger, let alone open up things that are painful to a stranger. Another thing is that narcissists will lie, manipulate, and try to control the therapy session. And this can be very discouraging, very frustrating if you're in a therapy session with the narcissist hoping to make some progress in the relationship. But Narcissists can be very controlling and very deceitful. And this is all about the self-preservation, protecting their image, 
uh, avoiding that pain, shame that they've been trying to stuff down deep uh, so that nobody can know about it or that they don't have to deal with it themselves. Also, narcissists may use a therapy session to try to win people over. Mention this woman whose ex tried to win her back through the therapy session. Also, the narcissist may manipulate or charm the therapist. They'll try to get the therapist to sway more towards their position in the relationship and support them. And that's a very real thing. Another thing that I wanted to mention is that a lot of therapists do not understand narcissists, narcissism, narcissistic personality disorder. They don't get it. And they themselves can be subject to a lot of manipulation from the narcissist but also they just don't know what to do with people who have endured narcissistic abuse and that can be discouraging and just feel like oh my gosh like nobody gets it and there are therapists out there just to encourage you who do know about narcissism and narcissistic abuse but you have to persevere in finding them Another thing that I'll mention is that some therapists just don't want to deal with narcissists. I've literally had a psychiatrist friend say, I would much rather deal with pick another disorder. Like I'd love, to, I'd rather deal with, you know, this other, anything else but a narcissist. And so there may be therapists that just do not want to deal with narcissists because it can be very frustrating, can be very uh, discouraging, and it can just be very draining. And you likely have felt that way too, which is why you're looking for someone who's dealt with uh, narcissism and who's, who's well-versed in it and who understands how it works. So again, hang in there and keep, keep looking, don't give up. Narcissists also tend to push boundaries. They'll push the therapist's boundaries. They will push your boundaries and not know when to quit. And they will use the therapy sessions to do that and to get those reactions, to watch you squirm, to make you cry and to get some pleasure out of that. So that's something else to consider in terms of narcissists and how they use and abuse the therapy session. There are some narcissists, however, who maybe have tried therapy in the past. Maybe when they were younger, their parents took them to therapy and maybe it didn't stick, maybe it didn't work. Maybe they were subjected to a lot of adverse experiences along the way on an ongoing basis and they couldn't keep up with therapy to be able to counter the effects of whatever adverse experiences they endured. So some narcissists may be of the mindset that it doesn't work, it doesn't matter, they don't care and or they just like the way they are and just it's it's the path of least resistance would be to just have other people deal with it deal with them take care of them you know fix themselves or whatever and then just hop to another person who can then you know, be subjected to their abuse and manipulation and lies and whatever else they want to dump onto them another thing is the fear factor and i mentioned this a little bit before just that fear of exposure, that fear of dredging up those difficult emotions or painful memories from childhood in particular, if they experienced something really tragic, or even it could be during their formative years or even adult years. But that fear of dealing with that, that fear of having to face the people that they've hurt, knowing that what they did was wrong or the way that they acted was hurtful and just dealing with the mess that they've made in some cases, the financial abuse, the uh, the years of just of verbal abuse, physical abuse, and the lack of progress in the relationship, whatever the relationship is because of their behavior, because of their character, that can be a hard pill to swallow. And finally, one thing that I wanted to mention from a trauma-informed perspective that the know, like, and trust factor is really huge in terms of therapy. And that's definitely true for you. It's also true for the narcissist. Narcissists, are, as I mentioned, are very self-protective. They're in self-preservation mode. They're in survival mode. They've likely experienced adversity, abuse, different things growing up along the way. They need to be able to feel like there's a safety, trust, 
transparency in the context of the therapy session or environment to be able to be vulnerable or to even begin to scratch the surface of whatever is going on underneath and whatever they need to deal with, whatever trauma, whatever behavior, whatever relationship dynamics they are having to deal with. And that can be that can be frustrating and that can be discouraging, especially if the narcissist just feels like they can't do that. And sometimes narcissists will assume that other people behave in the same way that they do and that they're out to get them. And so they'll stand firm in their unwillingness to engage or to, to go to therapy or to let their guard down or to be vulnerable or humble to preserve that image, to protect themselves, to you know keep from getting hurt, to not have to face that pain, to not deal with that shame. Narcissists have a lot of issues around therapy and it can be very frustrating or discouraging if someone in your life who is narcissistic or toxic just stubbornly refuses to seek therapy or to even go to therapy with you, say in the context of a, a romantic relationship or even a marriage um, or you know, a parenting situation. At the end of the day, you have to do what you need to do to take care of yourself, to protect your peace, and to be able to process your own pain so that you can begin your healing and be able to recover and go on to do what you need to do to live a productive life. You're not alone and you're not crazy. Know who you're dealing with, know who you are. Take care and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.